Hi, I'm Tim McMacken, and I'm the documentation lead for IBM Urban Code products. Today I'm going to show one way of implementing blue-green deployments in IBM Urban Code Deploy. We added some features in version 6.2.4 that make this type of deployment easier to manage, so I'll walk through what I think is a straightforward way of implementing this kind of deployment. There are definitely other ways to do it, but here's a way that makes sense to me. I'm guessing most people watching this video are familiar with blue-green deployments, so I'll just give a quick summary before I show it actually implemented. At a basic level, the blue and the green are identical copies of my production environment. While my customers are using the green environment, I can update the blue environment with a new version of my application. I can take my time making sure that the new version that's running on the blue environment works. Then when I'm ready, I switch my customers to the blue environment. If you set things up right and all it takes is a change in your load balancer, you can make that switch with zero downtime. I mentioned zero downtime, but there are some other advantages to blue-green deployments. For one thing, I always have a working version of my application in the inactive environment. So if there's a problem in production, I can switch back to the old version quickly. Also, when I update the inactive environment, I've got time to test the new version on the production hardware and make sure everything works before I start sending customers to it. And as you'll see, I can automate all of this to make it run smoothly. The trick to setting up the blue-green production environment, at least the way I'm implementing it here, is that I'm using three nodes with two versions of my application running on each node. There are different ways to make that work, but in this case I'm using different ports. One version of my application is running on port 8080, that's the blue part, and one version is running on port 8081, that's the green part. This way I don't need two actual copies of my production hardware, and I know that the blue environment is the same as the green environment because they're on the same hardware. Before I start the deployment, I've got one version of my application running on the active green port and an older version of the app running on the inactive blue port. The first step is to deploy the new version of my application to the inactive parts of the environment. As you'll see later, there's nothing fancy about how this works. I can use my usual component processes to run the deployment. After the deployment, I can run any manual or automatic testing I want on that new version to make sure it's running right in the production environment. But here's the important part my customers are still using the older version because the load balancer is still sending traffic to the green port. I'm testing the new version on the inactive port of the environment, kind of like a dark launch. If there are any problems, I can roll back or fix that new version without causing any interruption. If the new version on the blue port looks good, I'm ready to let my customers start using it. I'll start by switching one node to the new version as a canary node, just to make sure everything works, before I send all my customers to the new version. If anything goes wrong on the Canary node, the old version is still running on the other port, so all I have to do is flip the load balancer back to the old version. When I'm confident that my new version is running well, I update the load balancer to point to the new version of my application on all nodes. I still have the option of switching back to the old version if anything goes wrong. And that's it. Now I'm ready to repeat the process by deploying a new version on the now inactive green environment. Here's how I've got this implemented in Deploy. First, let's have a look at the resource tree in the environments. I've got two resource folders, one for the green part of the environment and one for the blue part of the environment. I've added the agents for the nodes to each folder, which creates separate agent resources for each environment. This is how I can have two separate logical environments running on the same physical environment. I install a single agent to the physical server and then add that agent as a separate agent resource to each environment my deploy server treats those agent resources as entirely separate environments. So let's look at how the environments are set up. Of course I have my regular development and test environments that can be set up any way I want. For blue-green I'm only concerned with the production environments. The blue environment uses the blue agent resources that I showed you on the resource tree. I've tagged one node as the canary node and the other nodes as main system so I can update the canary node first and then the rest of the nodes when I'm ready. If I open up each agent resource, you can see that I have my application mapped to each resource, so I'm running it on all three nodes. I'm using a component tag here to grab all three components of the JPET Store application, but you could also just map the components in individually. You'll also notice that I added the load balancer component to each resource. Of course, I don't actually have the load balancer running on each node. I just need access to component processes that change settings on the load balancer. Your implementation might be different here, it was just convenient for me to add the load balancer here so I can call component processes that swap the ports. Your load balancer setup might be different. This is just how I've set up HAProxy. I've also set an environment property to the port the environment is using. 
I'll need that in my processes to know which port I'm deploying to. The green environment is the same, it's just using the other set of agent resources and the other port. And finally, I've set an application property to record which environment is active. I'll use that in the automation to make sure I deploy to the inactive environment. Here's the application process I'm using to both install the new version and do the switch on the load balancer. The first thing I want to do is to make sure that nobody messes directly with the environment that my customers are currently using. So I check the value of that application property here. If someone is trying to run this process against the active environment, it stops. Just to check to make sure that people are using the blue-green deployment process in the right way. You might have a different way of handling that. The next step just calls the component deployment processes for the components of the JPET store sample application. Again, I've grouped the components with a component tag here, so I only need one step. You may need to call processes separately, or do whatever you need to do to deploy your application. Other than that, there's nothing fancy about this step. The process knows which environment I'm running on, and it updates the components on the agent resources in that environment. Then I run some automated tests to make sure that the new version is running fine on the production environment. If that deployment fails, or if the test fails, I run a rollback step to get back the version I had before this process started. I'm not going to cover rollback in detail here because I've got a whole other video on rollbacks. This just gets me back to where I was before the process started if anything goes wrong with this deployment. And again, even if the deployment step works, my customers don't know that anything has changed because the load balancer is still sending traffic to the active version. This blue box is where the magic happens. In UCD version 6.2.4, we've added the ability to deploy only to specific resource tags. Remember that I tagged one node as the canary node and the rest of the nodes as main system, just for lack of something better to call them. This box is a loop that runs over those resource tags. I can open up the properties for the step and even set the order for the tags. So this loop will run over the canary node first and then all the other main system nodes. I've set max concurrent tags to one, so it's going to run over one tag at a time. The first step in the loop switches the load balancer to point to the newly deployed app version. I'm not going to go into the detail of how this works here because I'm working on a white paper that'll cover that, but in short, I'm using a component process on the load balancer component to make that switch. That's why I added the load balancer component on each node, even though the load balancer isn't actually installed on each node. It gives me access to a component process that updates which port the load balancer is sending traffic to. Again, the first time I go through this loop, I'm doing this just for the canary node or notes based on the canary resource tag. When that step is done, a third of our customers are using the new version of the app because the load balancer is sending them to the new version's port. Next, I run some automated tests on the new version. If anything goes wrong, I just roll back the load balancer to the old port number and the load balancer goes back to where it was before I ran this process. I've also included a manual approval step here so I can verify that the new version of the app is running fine on the Canary node. When I approve that, this loop runs again to swap the load balancer for all of the other nodes. Finally, I update the application property with the name of the newly active environment. Okay, let's give this a try. Right now my green environment is active and it's running version 1.2 of JPET Store. Here's the load balancer page and I've set up the application to show the version here on the home page so I can see easily what version it's running. Back on the server I'm going to deploy the new version 1.3 to the blue environment. I start up the process and give the versions or snapshot to deploy just like usual. I can also change the tags to deploy to and their order on the fly, but for now I'll leave it deploying to the canary node or nodes first and then to the rest of the system. First it installs the new version of the components as usual to all three nodes. Then the process goes into the for each tag loop. 
It's split out here by the canary and main system tags. So the process updated the load balancer for just the canary node, ran an automated test, and now it's waiting for my approval. So let's see what that looks like from the customer's perspective. Here's my load balancer page again. As I refresh the page, I get old version, old version, new version. Old version, old version, new version. I've got three nodes, and one of them is updated. HA proxy is set up in a round robin, so each time I refresh the page, I get the next node in the series. So now I've got a third of my customers using this new version. I can wait as long as I like and run whatever tests I want to make sure that I'm okay with this new version. If I don't like it, the old version is still running on the other environment, so swapping back is as easy as rejecting the approval and letting the rollback run. When I'm ready to move on, I'll approve this manual step so the process can continue. Now the nodes under the main system tag get updated, and it waits for my approval again. I can go back to the load balancer, and now every time I refresh the page, I get the new version of the application. So that's a basic implementation of a blue-green deployment in UCD. I've glossed over some of the details of the component processes because they're going to be different depending on how your components and load balancer are set up. So if you've got questions about a specific implementation detail, ask us in the forums. Also from here, it isn't a big leap to do a rolling deployment to many nodes. It's just a matter of how you use the for each agent or for each tag loop. Thanks for watching.